over SMB to try and find the usernames and passwords. SMB check vulns will do vulnerability checks for a number of remotely exploitable MSRPC bugs. And SMB PS exec lets you execute processes on the remote system for things like dumping the password hash, hashes, or starting a remote display server on the system. And so I thought about this a lot, and I had these great new scripts that Ron created, and I thought, well, I really want to test them out. And I don't have many Windows machines on my home network, so I wasn't going to really try them. I couldn't find out much information from that. So I thought, well, who would be a good target for a large sale scan of this sort of a script? Well, <laughs> it's their own darn protocol. So you would think if anyone could secure it, Microsoft could. And I was kind of interested to see how they would decide to secure it. Would they block all the SMB ports? Would they very carefully lock down the individual services to prevent you from getting much information? How would that go? And so I did the scan, and I have reported this. That I actually did the scan last year and reported the data to MSRC, so I hope they fixed it. If not, it's going to be some late nights in Redmond coming up. <laughs> Um, so let's see how this scan worked. Step one, find the target IP addresses. We scanned more, I used Whois on the Aaron database, typical methods, and found more than a million IP addresses assigned to Microsoft and decided to scan them all. I, I decided to start with a broad version detection scan, and it could have, the scan could have been more intrusive and more inclusive, but I decided first we'll start with a medium to light scan to kind of figure out what's going on on the network, what is where, because a larger scan would take longer and more likely to raise eyebrows. So here's what we did. I said hyphen T4 to be more aggressive on timing, scan the 50 most popular ports based on our empirical data, do version detection, OS detection, a couple OS detection optimization flags, set the host group to 128 because that scans more in parallel to make the scan quicker, set a host timeout of 10 minutes so we don't waste too much time on one extra slow host, uh, do the output to files, tell it where to get the input uh, Microsoft IP address list from, and let it chug away. Now there was a time when this sort of scan could take a month or more for MMAP to run against a million IPs. And to make it faster, NMAP has a wide variety of performance optimization flags you can tune, but that was a real pain in the neck. And now I'm happy to report that NMAP has gotten a lot smarter over the years in its algorithms to do large scans much more quickly. So this scan, it finished in about 26 hours, about one day, scanned all the IPs, and found 74,293 hosts up. So I could have even tuned it more to make it go faster, but it's not like I have to watch it running, and making it too fast, again, raises more you know, notice on the network. So from that, let's take a very quick look at the results. So I'm going to switch to a larger, oops. Let me get to the terminal window again. I think I moved it. Yeah, I'll get it. I see it. Okay, so here's the larger of the terminals, and we're going to So we look at this giant file, and it's kind of intimidating just in its length in general. It's 361,000, more than a third of a million lines long. So if I was going to go through this whole file with you, we'd be here all night and still only have a small fraction of it. So a little trick I like to do when I do these large scale scans like this to look at the results is I have a little command that you know, it's basically just simple Unix shell command that basically finds all the open ports and shows us which services are the most common on the network. So here we see the most common is 4,745 examples of IIS-6 and then more IIS-6. We have to give them that they're at least eating their own dog food here 
in running a lot of Microsoft stuff, although they do have a lot of Apache. And what I find more useful than actually looking at the most common services is to go down to the bottom and look at the more obscure stuff because that's where you find the less common services that might be more easily exploitable than the things that everybody runs lots of. And on the network I found all sorts of little printers and um, teleconferencing systems and various little devices. I could log into like the admin interface of some printers and see their toner level and that was fun but it, um, <laughs> it, it kind of gets away from our main goal which was to show what our SMB scripts can do. So we're going to avoid this sort of network voyeurism and instead look at oops. instead we're going to look at how the SMB results turned out. So I did the big scans and I looked at how it worked and it turned out that the vast majority of Microsoft networks just completely blocked the Windows ports from their networks such as 135 and 4 445. And this is probably something, you know, other enterprises and businesses should take note of. You know, if Microsoft feels that it's unsecurable and should be blocked, then you probably would want to as well. But notice I said the vast majority of their networks blocked them. Not all of them did. There was um, dozens, there were dozens of machines that had 445 open, for example, which is the more common of the, uh, the more modern of the SMB ports. So I did a new scan and here we'll look at the scan command. The important thing we really care about is this hyphen hyphen script equals. That says we want to do an NSE scan and here's the list of scripts that we run including enum domains, enum processes, basically all of the ones that were not super super intrusive that Ron wrote. So syntactically I could say SMB hyphen brute star and then it, or SMB hyphen star and get all of them but I don't want scripts like SMB brute. Even I'm not crazy enough to brute force attack Microsoft's passwords and then present about it at a, at a big conference. So instead I just used the less intrusive ones to see if we could still find interesting information. Now before we look at the results I would like to get some commitment from the audience. Who here thinks that Microsoft's SMB was completely secure? Huh. Not even the Microsoft people are raising their hands. <laughs> well, um, let's take a look. Maybe, maybe Microsoft will surprise us a little bit and um, be very well locked down. So this time we're going to look at another file. This is the one from that new scan I mentioned. And we don't have time to look at it in a lot of depth. So I'll just go to one of my favorite machines here. we see first of all that it has 976 closed ports. So instead of doing the default filter, default deny and saying only allow access to the ports that we want to, they've set it so that we can access all the ports and see whether they're open or closed. And the problem, and then they've explicitly banned a few ports like um, Telnet we can see and one and auth we can see. And so instead of default deny, they did default allow and then blocked some ports. So we'll take off a couple security points for that. Then we'll go down a little bit, look at the open port lists. You can see there's a huge number of them. And really, you know, when you want to secure your systems, you want to try and minimize, minimize the potential avenues for attack. And so in this case, we're going to have to deduct a few more points for having so many open ports. Now we finally get to the host script results you can see at the bottom. This is the NSE stuff that we were talking about and we can see whether those managed to find any interesting information. So SMB enum shares is the first one that reports. We see the anonymous IPC share and then we see some restricted shares for admin, net login, C drive and D drive. Now they are restricted but I'm not sure that it's still best practice to share your, your drives uh, across the internet. And if we had used the SMB brute 
uh, script, maybe we could have found some passwords there. So we have a few more scripts. And then we get to SMB enum users. This is the one that tries to enumerate all the usernames on the machine. And we can see that it was actually pretty successful. Here's an administrator account here. And we've got this guy, Richard. You, he's the boss man is his uh, <laughs> username. And so you can see you get the username as well as some supplemental information there. Um, let's see, there are a few other ones that I wanted to highlight here. MSB50 Net is the Building 50 networking team. So again, you get a little more, since we used the script in verbose mode, we get more information than just the usernames. Uh, even things like, you know, this one, the password does not expire, normal user account. This one's called not a guest exclamation point. Um, here's one. It says support Microsoft Corporation, Redmond, Washington. And my favorite, though, has got to be the t-shirt, ho. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, a lot of information you can find with these SMB scripts. And I would like to mention that, like I said, it was actually Ron who did all the work writing them. All I did was just point them at Microsoft and pull the trigger. And uh, Ron actually, I think, are you here today, Ron? Awesome. Let's give Ron a round of a hand <laughs> applause. All right, so now that's one large-scale example of SMB, of uh, NSE scanning. And I'm happy to report that NMAP's co-maintainer, David, now has a great example of fun, other types of fun things you can do with the scripting engine. Thanks, Fedor. So have you ever had sort of a simple idea that just started growing and growing and growing? and uh, grew into something, in this case, kind of great. That's what happened to us with one of our NSE scripts. We have a script called HTTP favicon. It's a pretty simple idea. Uh, you, you guys know what a favicon is. We uh, open up the web browser here. It's this little icon that appears next to the address in your browser. You can download that and hash it and collect a bunch of these hashes and build a database. And then later on, you can look things up in the database and try and match patterns with the, with the icons. The idea is that a lot of web applications have default icons. So you can connect to a website, and then this script will come back. It'll download the, it'll download the icon. It'll hash it. And then it'll say, this site is probably running Joomla, or this site is probably running MediaWiki, or something like that, which is interesting information for someone testing a website. So this script was submitted. It was a guy named Vladko Kosturyak, and I've heard that he may be in the audience. Are you here? Oh, there, he there he is. There he is. All right. <laughs> if you didn't know, today is buy an Nmap developer a drink day, so <laughs> you're right on time. Uh, so we got the script, and it was a great script, and it did everything right. Just one problem was that the database was kind of small. It only had about a dozen entries, and we weren't sure how good they were, how current they were. We wanted to really back it up and have a quality database to ship out to Nmap users. Whenever we build a database in Nmap, we really like to back it up with real results. And also, we just like to do a lot of scanning. So that's kind of an excuse for us to build our databases. All right, so what are we going to do? How are we going to collect all these icons? Does anybody know of a tool that you can use to scan millions of internet sites? A tool that is scriptable, perhaps? OK. So, so it's, an obvious, it's an obvious choice for us. We're going to do this with Nmap, and it's a good choice for an NSE script. So I wrote this script called favicon survey. If you download Nmap, you're not going to find this script, because it was sort of a throwaway script just for, just for this survey. But I wrote this, and it does just what I said. It connected to a bunch of websites, download the icons, hash them, build a huge database. Let's compare writing this as an NSE script to writing it as, say, a custom Perl or Python script, which would also be a viable option. If you're writing a Python script or something, it's easy.